Hey everyone, my name is Chris and this is my 2021 desk setup video. I've been previously using an IKEA desk that I had from 2018. It was great, but it was a little bit small for my needs as I've been growing and I've needed more space and more utilities. Plus, as we've been working from home, I just needed a bigger desk so that I could get work done. So this is my old desk right here. And this is my new desk. I wanted a setup that didn't rely on IKEA furniture for the sole reason that I live here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And so if I were to order something from the nearest IKEA in Texas or in Kansas, that would mean that if I order a desk, say one of their standard desks for $500, $600, then there's another $200 delivery fee. And so at that point, the cost of shipping outweighs getting a simpler desk. So that's what I did with what I have here. I wanna go ahead and show you all the pieces that make up the setup and hopefully you get some inspiration for your own setup. So starting first, we have the Blue Yeti microphone. It is a common microphone that you see in a lot of setups. I prefer it just because of how simple it is and how well you can EQ it in post. I've seen a lot of Binging with Babbage videos and the fact that he uses this microphone and his voice sounds terrific once he EQs it. It gives me a lot of inspiration to just go out and get this. And so that's the reason I picked up the Blue Yeti. For my keyboard of choice, I am using the MX Keys by Logitech as well as the MX3 mouse. They are both well known for their quality. I love the keyboard. It has a slim profile. The keys feel tactile. It has a sleek look to it and it just complements this desk setup so nicely. It is probably one of the best things that I have picked up for the desk. And at the price of $100, you get a number pad as well as your regular keyboard compared to the Apple keyboard where you just get the keyboard by itself. So you get an additional set of keys that are useful for things like organizing your files in Lightroom, and I find that super helpful to have. As well as with the MX Master 3 mouse, you have the vertical scroll wheel, so you can use that to move along your timeline while editing in Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere. Moving on for speakers, you have a staple here. You have the Kanto YU2 speakers. They are powered speakers that also serve as monitors. I love them. They're small. They take up a small footprint on the desk. And plus with the risers, they have the sound aiming right towards me. So that makes it easier to monitor when I'm editing videos like this one or I'm just listening to the music. So this table is the Christopher Knight table from Amazon. It is a dining table that is 69 by 30 by 30 inches. And so that gives you plenty of space to spread out, have all your equipment here, and you can move everything around as needed and not have the desk feel cluttered or cramped. That was the issue I was running into with my previous desk, which was about 48 inches across. And you'd have your monitor on top of your computer, on top of everything else. This one gives me ample room to set up and do everything I need to do. Assembly is pretty easy. So you just unfold it and then you attach the legs and you're good to go with a few crossbars underneath for support. It holds up all my equipment wonderfully and it makes everything so much easier as far as getting my desk nice and clean because I could spread everything out. On top of that, I love the texture of the wood. It makes for great backdrops when I'm doing top-down photos of any equipment that I might pick up or anything I wanna show off for you guys. Taking a look at the monitor, this is the BenQ, and let me make sure I got this right. The BenQ PD2700U. It's a 27 inch 4K monitor with 100% sRGB color accuracy. So when I'm doing things like video editing or editing photos, it makes it super easy for me to make sure that my colors are accurate right out the gate and I can go back and calibrate as needed, but to have just a solid reference point at the beginning makes the process so much easier for making sure that my colors and my lighting is correct. Moving over to the main part of my desk setup is the M1 Mac Mini. Plenty of people have said such amazing things about it and I can attest that the performance of this new M1 Mac Mini lives up to the hype. I've been using an Intel-based MacBook Pro since late 2016 and I've loved it. It's been my main workhorse 
but as I've been editing bigger and bigger projects, I needed something that could keep up and the M1 Mac Mini does the job fantastically. When you import footage into Final Cut, everything seems to move so much quicker, exporting is quicker, moving through the timeline, adding effects. It doesn't struggle, and I'm doing that with just eight gigs of RAM on this unit. It is a game changer for me, and I'm looking forward to whatever Apple does with the next iteration of Pro M1 chips. Attached to the M1 Mac Mini is the CalDigit TS3 Plus Thunderbolt 3 dock. With this one dock, I am able to have an SD card reader, USB hub, Thunderbolt hub, USB-A hub. So all my accessories for the M1 Mac mini just run into there. I have my microphones, my speakers, my external hard drives all running through that one hub. And then from one cable goes straight into the M1 Mac mini. It is super convenient. It cleans up everything in the back going into the computer so easily. I love it. It's probably one of the best investments I've made as far as making this setup. I would definitely recommend this if you're looking at the IO in the back of the M1 Mac mini because it's limited to four ports, two USB-A and two Thunderbolt slash USB-C, then you're limited with options. And because of the dock, it definitely expands upon what you're able to connect to the M1 Mac mini. I have two hard drives hooked up right now to the Cal Digit dock. I have a Samsung T7 external SSD. This is what I'm editing my footage off of now. It has a fantastic read and write speed of over 1000 megabytes per second, which means that as I'm editing footage in Final Cut, everything is being rendered and edited in real time. It makes things move a lot faster and having that speed both in editing graphics type and everything else inside the timeline plus exporting makes things a lot smoother. And then I have an archive drive, which is a Lucy hard drive. I've been using it. It's great. It uses USB-C. I love it. I wouldn't get the USB-C model. It is solid as far as archiving stuff, but I would opt to get the Thunderbolt version instead. It is a lot faster, plus it has a Thunderbolt out port, which you can use to connect to other Thunderbolt devices and daisy chain that way. It gives you a lot more versatility in that sense versus this one, which is just USB-C. Finishing the desk, we have the Vmoda M100 headphones. These are my favorite pair of headphones when it comes to editing. They clamp over my head, they provide an accurate sound. And with the dock, I'm able to just have everything plug right into the front and easily access my headphone port so I can edit my music and my videos as needed. Of course, you can't have a desk setup video without talking about the chair that you're sitting in. And the chair that I picked is the Lazy Boy Joel chair. I found it at Staples for about $200 on sale. It is very comfortable. It is very comfortable. The wheels glide very easily and the cushion is very comfortable. The one downside I will say about this chair is that even though you have wonderful lumbar support and you have the headrest is that when you open it and begin to assemble it, there is an odor to it. So you might want to build this outside and let it sit out for a few days before you bring it inside and have it inside your office. Other than that, it is definitely worth the price and it is so comfortable sitting and being here for hours as I'm editing. So it is definitely a good investment. Last but not least, let's talk about how I like this room. So right now the light that's hitting me is the daylight that's bouncing in through the window, but when it gets darker, then I need something else. And so for that, I use the C by GE lights. Right now, they're really good for the price. They're simple, I just screw them in. You don't need a hub like the Philips Hue lights. But I have noticed something where you might have an error where because of communication between the lights and the hub, there might be a failure where the lights don't turn on. And so I'm looking towards Philips Hue in the future, but for now I'm using the C by GE lights, which when they work, they work well. So if I say, turn on office, then everything is lit up for me automatically. It makes it very easy for me to do things in here. And if I were to do something like set lamp to ultramarine, I can have a colored light in the background as a interesting point, kind of an accent light to make things a little bit more lively. 
All of this is controlled through the Google Home Mini. I gave it a vocal command and it allows me to keep my notes organized as well as control the hallway with Nest. This allows me to control my lights and the hallway very easily just by giving out vocal commands. It allows me to turn off the fan so that I can record videos a lot easier without having to get up and reset everything. Below the Google Home Mini is the Google Wi-Fi. So I use the Wi-Fi setup that comes with a three pack of a base and then two extenders and it creates a mesh Wi-Fi network inside my house. I have fiber coming in through my modem which gets fed to one of the units and then that unit repeats that signal to each of these extenders creating a mesh network and it allows me to have Wi-Fi coverage all throughout the house without any lag of service. So I recommend it for ease of use. Also, the app gives you lots of features as far as password protection and making sure that your guests can have a password as well. So you don't necessarily need to share the password that you use for your main Wi-Fi. You can create a guest network and have your guests use that instead. Last but not least is the Godox VL100 sitting over here on top of a newer heavy duty light stand. So with this, I use it as my key light for videos where I get this nice full flattering light. I picked this up after working on a production set and then watching Gerald Undone's review of it. And it impressed me with the performance, both seeing it on his video as well as in person and that was enough to convince me that this was the light that I needed for both video interviews when I'm doing production work for my clients as well as for just having a setup in here inside my office. So that's it. That's my 2021 desk setup video. I hope you found something useful or inspirational in this video that can help you make a better desk setup, especially if you don't have access to a lot of stores or resources in your area. My name is Chris. I will see you in the next video. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you want to see more content like this, be sure to hit the like button. It helps the channel out. I appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video. One.